what you need to do is go check that credit and see if you got a new crib there. Because you got kids coming in. They need rooms, bro. Real talk. You can't have all of them crammed up in that one room now. You can't have them in one room. You got to have rooms for your kids, bro. How many kids you got? How many kids you got, bro? Let's talk. Man to man, let's talk about it. Face the music. See, what I'm spitting here is real masculine talk. If you a man, you'll provide a better space for your family. If you a man. All that talk about masculine this and masculine that, a masculine man provides a space for his family. That's what a masculine man does. A masculine man don't sit online talking about another man all day. He's supposed to be focusing on building his family. You see the difference? You see the difference between real men, real masculinity? A masculine man sacrifices life for his family. A masculine man does that. A masculine man will go get the house for his family. No, he ain't gonna sit around watching his family struggle. No, he's gonna go build. That's what a man does. Real masculine energy put in the work to make sure his family is good. A real man, make sure his family is good. He don't sit online talking about a man all day. Well, I wanna catch the fade. Bro, you better go catch some credit. You better go get a loan. You better go get a house because your family need you right now. Real talk. Your family need you right now, bro. Them kids that's coming in, they need bedrooms. They need mattresses. They need a stroller. Before we get started reading some of these comments and replaying the clip a new breed, I want to shout out Go Dogs, brother. I appreciate you sharing the videos. Thank you so much. And I pray that the most high keep you. At Lily Pamela Lampkin, she said, another powerful breakdown. I appreciate your support. To Christ I give the glory. Uh, why no 6911 said this commentary was easy to understand and well put together. This is the video that I released Friday night, uh, last night. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I got a lot of material I'll be releasing, but thank you guys for bearing with me. I try to be as thorough and transparent as possible while releasing a higher volume of content. I'll try to get out three to five videos per week minimum moving forward. At Darkness said 100 grand cash and 20 healthy men is plenty to start the project. I believe you're referring to the UP Farms Land Initiative. Uh, nobody. It'll cost way more than that. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? It's not just some simple plot of land with a few houses that they're trying to build. New Breed plans to invite thousands of people onto the land. I mean, these people need to drink, wash. They need shelter. Uh, he wants to obviously industrialize the land and utilize all of the space of the land. Okay, meaning he got to pay for discovery. So men can drill into the earth. And those guys, from my understanding, they charge by the hour or by the foot. Okay? I estimate at least 15 to $25 million. Okay? He's going to get the people to pay for that. So obviously, he doesn't have the money. Okay? And that 15 to $25 million, that's really conservative for all of that land space. It may cost easily more than that okay at scorpio mama said can you speak on how these men supposed to be all knowing but begging for gofundme trend and rollo well rollo and these guys they rush their content and they're not as thorough okay rollo really rollo and karatazar and all these dudes they really should be calling out New Breed on his hypocrisy, how he and so many others teach the false doctrine of polygyny. But I'll touch on that later. As far as Trend Genius, I mean, that guy is a professional sorcerer and he conveys what I call public witchcraft. But the people who give to this demon are to share just as much of the blame because they are too stupid and lazy to read the scriptures and discern between good and evil. And by the way, Trend Genius is also partnered with YouTube. So he gets a check from YouTube and the idiots who give to him, they just add on to that. Okay. 
the problem is the people support those who speak the truth don't receive as much support. That's really the problem here. So we're not just blaming trend genius. We're blaming all of these other people who support these false prophets. Okay, because the scriptures say they'll have tickling ears. Okay, I always want to hear something new. We live in a very narcissistic culture. Okay, and by the way, while we're on this subject, I'm asking those of you who watch these videos to support truth. Okay, the scriptures say the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. When you hear the man of God speaking truth, support the man of God. Okay. That's how you deal with trend genius and the rest of these devils. Okay, you do your part to support truth and don't be a fence sitter. All right. Okay, so at Zarek 80 had a lot to say in defense of polygyny. I'm not going to read through all of this. I mean, just, just kept going back and forth. Like I say, these guys will do anything to repackage polygyny to copy and paste polygyny, okay? Let me let me read this, though. Let's see what he says here. He's, I'm just going to start in the middle of this. I'm not going to read this entire thing. He says, the law that the Most High gave to Moses, Moses was not the creator of the law. I never said Moses was the creator of the law. I've said many times in the video, well, not many times, but the particular series that I did, Polygyny is a package deal. I distinguish between the law of Moses and the law of God. They didn't call it the law of God because the Most High, knowing the end from the beginning, knew that there will be a law of grace. So to not confuse people, he called the old covenant the law of Moses. Okay, anyway, reading forward, he said, Moses is not the creator of the law. Jesus was living as the law of capital punishment was still in effect. Jesus couldn't change the law while he yet lived. Yes, he did, because he said, ye without sin has the first stone. Okay, obviously the people under the old covenant, under the law of Moses, were still sinning, but they were still stoning people to death. Okay, so I don't understand what you mean he didn't change the law. Jesus Christ is God. And I, I, a lot of these people also been coming on here saying Jesus Christ is not God. Only, he, only God can forgive sins. So the woman that they were going to stone to death, he forgave her. He had the power to tell her, go and sin no more. Okay? Anyway, reading forward, he says, neither... Would he anyway, because he clearly said that he didn't abolish the law. If you read with understanding, the, cry, the scribes and Pharisees did this thing, testing him. Yes, they did that to test him because they were still stoning people to death. Okay, that was the law. That's why after Christ died and rose again, he gave you the Apostle Paul, who spoke more on the letter of the law, killeth. Okay, and he's saying this in defense of polygyny. If you practice polygyny, the patriarchal trademark is that a man has the right to try his wife under the law of jealousy. Okay, the elders of the city will hear his cause, or a spirit of jealousy will come upon that man. That spirit of jealousy to this day still exists. That's why if you look in the news, men are just killing their spouses. These women are not even married to them. But these women are leaving these men. They're going and tracking them down and just blowing their brains out. Some of them are blowing their brains out as well. Take the wife's life and then take his own life. Okay? That's a spirit of jealousy that comes upon that man. So that spirit to this day hasn't gone anywhere, anywhere, okay? But the procedure, the process for trying a woman in court under the law of jealousy, that was how it was done under the law of Moses. If you're not doing that to this day and you have multiple wives and concubines, there's no regulation of who's doing what. That's why Christ called this an adulterous generation. 
Okay, these guys try so hard to repackage polygyny to, like I say, copy and paste polygyny for the sake of P U S S Y. Okay, then he goes on to say uh, the law, profits, and the letters are a package deal. Okay, but what is that saying? God gave Israel a command not to follow after the foreign women and their false gods. Did our forefathers listen? No. Okay, so the next question you should ask is what was the penalty for that? Things were not just going to stay in place. Obviously, they didn't live in the land. Okay, they don't still live in Jerusalem because they were evicted. Okay, the Most High gave them an eviction notice. Then eventually, their person was evicted, them and their children. Did they practice polygyny while on eviction notice? Yes. The same way a person can live in their house while on eviction notice, but they got a period of time to pay or be evicted. But these ninjas never argued whether or not we were physically removed far from our borders of Jerusalem. They like to take what's sexy and try to somehow make it holy. Okay, it's sexy to a man to have multiple women. That doesn't mean you can make it holy. The Most High commanded Israel not to defile the land, lest it be riddled with whoredom. Especially when these wicked Edomites penetrated our women during the transatlantic slave trade. It's one of the reasons our women are so wicked today. Because they got the so-called white man spirit inside of them. But y'all ninjas who champion polygyny think after all those covenants the Israelites broke against the Most High that there would be no penalty for that. That things were just going to remain the same. No. Sin keeps taking things from us over the course of 6,000 years. Okay, do you see them asking, why is it that Adam lived to be 930 years old and we don't get to live that long today? No, it's common sense. Okay, the more sin that comes into the earth, the more things that will be taken from us. Okay, then they talk about King Solomon. Well, you got to look at King Solomon's fruit. The man had over 700 wives and all of them, I bet, were virgins. He's not going to be a man that wealthy and be taking secondhand women from another man that's laid with her. Otherwise, she's a concubine. That's why they distinguished the ones who were wives from the ones who were concubines. But you got guys like Newbreed who talk about seed, producing seed, just making children. Okay? We're not looking at seed. We're looking at fruit. So today, can an Israelite man find 700 virgins above the age of 21, keep all the consecrations under the law of Moses for the woman, okay, because they had to purify the blood of the woman. She couldn't touch things while she was on her menstrual, okay? Can they keep the law of jealousy, which again is the, the man's right under a patriarchal kingdom, okay, meaning you got to dismiss abortion child support, alimony, all of these things epitomizes a matriarchal kingdom. Can a man do that? No. Because again, all they're doing is just copying and pasting polygyny. It's a counterfeit version of polygyny. Okay, so moving on. James P.I. Mental says Ezekiel 18 debunks your notion of paying for the sins of our forefathers. Okay, let's take a look at it. Ezekiel 18. We're going to go to Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 14 through 17. And we're going to see if this debunks what I said, that the sins of the forefathers, according to Deuteronomy 5, 9, passed down to the children, down to the third and fourth generation. Starting at verse 14, it says, If, however, he begets a son who sees all the sins which his father has done and considers but does not likewise, 
who has not eaten on mountains, nor lifted his eyes to the idols of Israel, nor defiled his neighbor's wife, has not oppressed anyone, nor with a pledge, nor robbed by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry and covered the naked with clothing, who has not withdrawn his hand from the poor and not used usury or increase, talking about banks, okay, get loans for this and that, you, you living in the comfort of the land off of the banks, so you upholding Egypt. There's a scripture that also say, woe to him who upholds Egypt. Okay, continuing on. But has executed my judgments and walked in my statutes. Then, I'm saying this, then he shall not die for the iniquity of his father. So he got to do all of that. And then he shall not die. That word shall means maybe he still might die <laughs> because of the sins of his forefathers. Maybe he will, maybe he not, under the conditions that he follows all of those things I've already read in Ezekiel 18, 14 through 17. I can't believe this God sent me this. I mean, dude, read the scriptures. Christ and James said those heathen Edomites got to sell everything they own and give it to the poor. And, and after that, they got to follow him because they live by the sword and produce the blood money. Okay, the scriptures say if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. He who led into captivity shall go into captivity. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of his fathers, okay? Why you think in Luke 6, Christ said, woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Well, in this dispensation, who, who's laughing? Okay, it's not Judah, because the scriptures say Judah mourneth. It's these foul, frivolous, indignant Edomites who got a lot of folly in their voice, okay? Scriptures say the day of the Lord, they will mourn and weep. Okay. Lastly, at darkness says, I would tend to agree with new breed. Both guys are dirty, but I have way more respect for a man who is actively feeding, clothing, sheltering, protecting, and educating thousands of people. He's talking about dirty low dial. Where the other one, talking about Ringo TV, he tricks his friends into doing work and cheat them out of fair play. Okay, so first let's replay the clip of what Newbury said, and then I'll respond to this comment. It is what it is. Dow ain't no perfect man. But Pastor Dow's a better man than Ringo. Bet your bottom dollar that. He's a much better man than Ringworm. Regardless of his faults. I don't care damn what nobody say about that. Because I guess what? I can look at Pastor Dow and see what he's built. And if y'all don't like that, it is what it is. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so at darkness, I hope you're watching this. Dirty Low Dow is by far more wicked, even more wicked than Ringo TV. And I'll explain why. Again, number one, this man is 11 years older and he's closer to biting the dust. And still, Satan is using him at a much larger capacity, meaning the chances of him dying in his sin before Ringo TV is much higher because he's 11 years older. That's just common sense. He's being used at a larger capacity, and he's older, and he has much to give up, which leads to number two. He has way more to give up than Ringo TV. And Dirty Low Dow actually practices the counterfeit form of polygyny. Ringo TV, although he is a hypocrite because 
He only has one wife, but he teaches otherwise. He teaches a counterfeit polygyny. But if Dow was to ever sincerely repent, that would mean he gave up all that land in eight different states. And he gave up all his wives, shut down his YouTube channel. Okay, that's a lot to give up. Okay, you pretty much see a broken man. Because what's going to follow after that? After he give up all those wives? Well, he got children with some of them. It's going to come child support. It's going to come alimony. Okay, they got tons of tape on this dude. Okay, the wages, that's what the scriptures say, the wages of sin is death. Okay, Ringo TV only has one wife. Which still makes him stupid because he, he, the Most High will honor his marriage if, if he just come forth and repent. Okay. I mean, the devil don't get screwed on the deals he make with men. I mean, obviously, both of them are wicked. You know, they've both made a deal with the devil. I will say this, though. I believe new breed is really a tricky situation. Because at the moment, right now, new breed is not as wicked as Dirty Low Dow or Ringo TV. I just believe he got some lessons that he needs to learn. And he may need to be humbled by all that he's going through right now. But I say that with an asterisk by his name, okay? Because I believe New Breed has the potential, the bigger he gets, to become even more wicked than Dirty Low Dow, okay? Depending on how big he gets, okay? Because pride comes before a fall. And getting all of these egos, all of these people together on the land from different backgrounds and walks of life and thinking you're going to still serve the most high, that's not going to happen. You'll end up turning into Jim Jones 2.0, brother. Okay. But he does teach some things about the end times. I mean, I'm praying for them all to repent. Okay. But at the moment right now, I got Dirty Low Dow number one. Okay. He's the Michael Jordan of wickedness. Okay. Then Ringo TV number two. And new breed number three, with the potential to become more wicked than all of them. Okay, this is why the Most High said, "Don't lord over the people." Okay, and that can happen to any man. I don't want new breed thinking I'm just picking on him. No, I'm making it all about Scripture. He said that he's open to talking about this. So hey, look, I'm I'm talking about it. I'm bringing it out to the public. It's nothing to hide. All right. Okay. But Dirty Low Dow takes things to a much larger level, okay? Because he wants to take your paycheck and he wants to take your wife, all right? That's a very dangerous man, okay? And not any man that takes his wife to straightway is a fool, okay? There's no way I would trust that man around my wife. Anyway, that's all I have for now. I got to get back to work. Again, the devil don't get screwed on the deals he makes with men. Don't let your flesh write checks. Your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. It's all about fates and gates. You got to have faith and you're going to need God's grace.